Well, if you've been following us in our three-part series talking about the Remarkable Paper Pro Move, this is the final episode. If you haven't already and you want to learn about why I chose the Move and its workflow, go ahead and check out the first video. Links in the description. And if you want to learn about the power of this tool as a productivity device, go ahead and check out the second video where I showcase the planner and some of the features that it offers. In this video, it is going to be a five minute quick start video on how you can get ready and get moving with your Remarkable Paper Pro and your Remarkable Paper Pro Move. So out of the box, I'm assuming you have your device all turned on, you've already paired it, you've charged it for a period of time, and you're ready to go. Some of the things that I feel that are most important is to go ahead and start up here and go to your settings. Underneath your settings, I'm gonna assume that you already went through and set up all this. You already have your Wi-Fi working and you even have your cloud sync set up. But some of the things that I like to showcase is there is a place where you can turn on a password. You can also go ahead and update personal information. You can change the brightness of that reading light and you can even turn on an extra bright filter. And this is where you would go ahead and lock the rotation of your device if you don't want it to spin when you turn it and pick it up. For the Move product, that one's probably important because you're gonna be constantly on the move and you might be moving it. I would turn that one on. The second thing I would probably do with the Move device over even maybe the desktop one, if you're gonna put that password protection on, definitely enable the personal information piece because that's gonna help others know whose device it is. So if they find it and you left it at a coffee shop, done that a time or two, they know how to contact you and hopefully there's a good Samaritan out there. Accessibility tool is gonna help you organize the font size as well as if you're right-handed or left-handed. So those are some basic quick start features in the settings. Let's talk about the navigation. Up here on top, you're gonna to have the ability to see your files. You have the ability to filter by notebook, PDFs, and eBooks. You also have a place for adding favorites. So any of your particular favorites you might have, you can easily do that. And you have the ability to create tags. Now, if you're wondering what tags are, tags are a way for you to kind of create um, a keyword attached to a note or a notebook, and it'll show up here. And you can see I have all my to-dos, I have staff to-dos, and I have some project information. So Bradford's a customer of mine. Every time I do a note relates well, to Bradford, I add a tag. That way I can easily go ahead and search for all my tags related to Bradford, and I know all the pages that are on there. Also, you can also use the search feature and do handwriting search if you have that Connect package, if you signed up for that and you're running the latest version of the software. And then the last thing is integration, if you wanna to integrate to uh, any third-party pieces that are available to you. And some of you might delete something, so right there's a trash can, you can see things that are being recovered. So I'm gonna go back to My Files. You have the ability, when you have your My Files, you can load files directly into the navigation. You can also create folders. To create a folder, you hit the plus button, here you can create that new notebook, you can create that folder or that quick sheet. If you create a folder, you have the ability to name the folder. A lot of times when it comes to my planner, I have a year for that planner. And the reason I do that, I keep the planner inside the year. And then any additional notes, quick notes or thoughts or ideas or any templates, any pages I exported, boom, I keep inside that year. No different than if you were an old Franklin Covey user and you wanted to have a binder, binder, folder, boom, one of the same. So when we go into the year, I'm gonna pull up the new optimized move planning system, which just looks like this. The move system of our planner has been optimized to work for this device with above page navigation and larger navigation down the side. And you can see that that allows it to sync between devices. You can easily make your notations here and expect them to sync there. So a lot of things that are important to know is when it comes to navigating, this is your finger, this is your writing utensil. Finger, writing utensil. You don't write with your finger, you don't navigate with your pencil. So if I hit year at a view, that's gonna take me to my year at a view page. It's gonna have a hyperlink list to all the pieces. Now if I go ahead and tap on that, just putting dots on the page, not navigating, because it's not my finger. If I tap on the one, it'll bring me to this particular navigation page. Now, across the top, you're gonna to see on the top here, I have my tools on the Remarkable Paper Pro, the tools are down the side. I click on a little button here and hold and drag and pull my tools on the top if I'd like to, or I can bring them back down to the side. 
I find on the larger devices, this is really nice because it allows me to easily pull my tools and it's kind of in line with my navigation. I find with the Move, having it across the top gives me kind of a one-handed point of interest that I can easily navigate between my tools. So that's pretty awesome. But what it also allows me to do is kind of take advantage of the side of this as a bevel. Now we did lock the keyboard before, but uh, if you leave it in landscape mode, this bezel here offers a really nice way for you to write in landscape. So if you are using our planner in the landscape mode, you can still utilize this device. I find that a lot of people that do their primary planning on a larger tablet, like the landscape two page view, those that are on smaller devices, like the portrait view, or someone that wants bigger space, bigger lines, portrait view is very nice. The templates in the planning system are identically the same. But let's talk about the actual tools. So first and foremost, when I go into the pen tools, we have a selection of different pens. We have uh, the roller ball, fine light, highlighter, pencil, and continue to go on with them. With each one of them, I can choose a different thickness, a light, a medium, as well as a thick. So you just have to kind of play around with that. But if I do light, you can see how it has like that. If I go into the medium, you can see here. And you also notice that if you have only two styluses, you can use it on both devices. And we can go into thick and show you that. Now, one thing you're probably wondering is, hey, Brandon, uh, I noticed that you're using your finger and your stylus across the tools. Yes, the finger stylus rule is just for navigation, not for selecting the tools. You can see that here. Uh, there's different thicknesses. We also have different colors. Now you can write in blue or you can write in yellow and you can see how that shows up. Where I really love the color is when it comes into making block scheduling. I like to show my work activities in one color, my personal activities in another color, as well as maybe any things that I'm doing with a small group in a different color. That block scheduling really kind of helps me organize my life. So that gives you a quick look there. I also then have the ability to go into eraser. An eraser allows me to either do a eraser that goes like this and I can just manually erase. I can even go down the center here and I'll only erase the pixels. Oh, I didn't have eraser picked on this one. That's why that didn't work. I can only erase the pixels where the eraser touched. If I choose to do this eraser, I can actually select the area and it'll erase it one I lift up the pen. Uh, one thing I want to point out, if you tap into the lipsticks here, you're going to see that you have additional tools and we'll jump into those in a minute. But the one I want to show you is the enable shapes. This is really cool. So if I can have that turned on, I'm going to do pen tool and do medium and do black. I'm going to draw a circle. Okay. It's going to make a perfect circle, right? But now I want to do a circle in a circle, like a bullseye. So I'm going to draw another circle. Okay, you can tell it's not quite the same, but I can take my pen as long as I hold down, it'll rescale that circle. So I'm gonna make it real small. There you go. And it looks more like an egg. But you got the idea. I can also do that with squares. And I'll make a rectangle. What I have some people do, this is kind of a unique piece. I'm gonna go ahead and use that uh, select erase. They might actually come in and use that I'm gonna go ahead and do blue. They might draw a rectangle here. They don't wanna use highlighters, but they wanna block off a period of time and now they'll write, maybe they got their event here, basketball game. So they can use that. They could also then come in here and maybe they wanted to color coordinate that because guess what? Daughter's playing basketball, she's yellow. Someone's playing, it'll be in blue. Biggest thing about using an e-ink tablet for a productivity tool with a planner is tracking your to-dos. And one thing I find that's most powerful, because especially for me, everything I set out to do isn't always accomplished, but it's still meaningful to my success or simply getting the list done for the wife. I can go ahead and use that lasso tool, select those to-dos, hit copy. I'm going to jump over with my finger to the next page and I'm going to tap on a screen and it's going to showcase those to do's there. 
this Elastical tool allows you to carry your to-dos from one day to the next. Also, it's really helpful if you create a template or you have like a journal log and you want to copy that across multiple pages, put it in your clipboard, copy it. The other part that's really cool about the Lasso tool is being able to use e-tiles. E-tiles are awesome, and you saw one right here. We have a collection of e-tiles that allow you to kind of customize the pages. You can either add your own notes, your own tables, you can adjust the different scheduling blocks. Uh, I can show you a few of those in a second, but let me show you one of them that I first love. If I go in and close this, jump back to my files, you see I have a folder called Tile Development, and I'm gonna pull in this sticky note pack. In this sticky note pack, there is across the top a navigation that you can jump between pages, and also the swipe over. These are all different uh, sticky notes. Some are white, some are yellow, some are blue. But I can use this lasso tool and I can go ahead and select that e-tile, hit copy, and I'm gonna go ahead after it's copied, I'm gonna go back to my planner. And on this particular page here, this is a note page. I'm gonna quick just create a new layer, tap the screen, tap with the pen tool, and now I can even resize that sticky note, and I can even rotate it if I want to. So it's kind of neat. But I'm gonna bring this over here, and I'm gonna turn it sideways just so it has a little bit of effect to it, right? And now here I have that sticky note. I'm gonna create a new layer, layer three. And the reason I'm doing that is with putting on that particular extra layer, I'm gonna write those notes across the top. And here it's going to be stop at mall. Just put a little sticky note there, what I wanna do. So with the e-tiles, we have the ability to customize pages, bring in widgets. I could copy this whole section and pull it from one page to the next just as well. But it's kind of a way to decorate, but yet still a decorative productivity sticker and not just a sticker that tells you it's Halloween, but you can get those if you choose to. So that is a look at our e-tiles, but a lot of the e-tiles that are probably most exciting are the ones that allow you to kind of really customize your page layout. So I'm just gonna show you one real quick. I can come into another example of our planner. Uh, this here is in landscape, so we're just gonna rotate this for you so you get a better feel. But this is a full length look. I can swipe through and you can see that there is going to be some additional layouts, like a 24 hour schedule. This is a really nice feature. You can use an e-tile to do that. Um, and those are all different e-tiles. Maybe you want to have a block. Again, that's an e-tile, it's our time tile. So you can change this page to better fit your needs. So if you're looking at planning systems and looking at things, uh, the e-tiles are really awesome ways to personalize it. So let's jump back into the planner and the device. And let's just talk about the last couple of tools that we want to showcase for you. If you haven't noticed, I use my finger to swipe between pages. I can also uh, use my finger to navigate. Uh, there is an undo button and a redo button. In this ellipsis here, you're gonna see a page overview. This allows you to see all the pages so you can quickly jump from one page to the next, kind of see previews You can do that. Again, I'm just gonna use my finger and navigate back to other pages if I choose to. And we also have the ability to create those tags. So on here, I'm just gonna put a new tag I'm gonna say open to do's because now there is an open to do on this page. I'll show you when we're all done with this segment that that page is in the to do's. I also have the ability to search. So I could search for handwritten notes uh, throughout this particular page as well as across the entire notebook. That was a new released update. Really awesome if you haven't checked it out. I also have the ability to share, send a copy, X words, and I also have the ability to change some additional information like the title of the book and have it set up so that it either goes to the last page fidgeted or the first page in the book as my cover. What I like about using the last page is if I'm using my planner, if I was on a planning page, I see those plans as the thumbnail. And then the last thing I wanna show you is add new note page. This is where eTiles gets really exciting because a lot of other traditional planners out there, when you add a new page, it's just blank. There's nothing there besides just blank canvas. And that's kind of blah. Well, if I choose to use an e-tile, 
I could go into one of my e-tiles again. And in this case, I am going to grab one of the contact tiles, which is an awesome tile, uh, because the contact tile allows me to kind of like track a diary of everyone that I talk to. So I'm going to come in here, use a select tool, and I'm going to select this little call log tile. I'm going to go ahead and copy, and now I'm going to jump back to this page in the planner that we just created, that blank page, because that's all it is, is a blank page. I'm going to go ahead and tap the screen, and right there is that call log. I'm going to resize that a little bit and move it up here. And I could even grab another tile that adds notes and make it like a note page. But now I have this call summary. So now what I could do on this particular page is I could go ahead and type notes if you have a, a type on like the keyboard here. But I'm just going to add a new layer. And I'm going to go ahead and write. And I had a call with Tom. And I have these to that to do's to do. We have a follow up date of 1.25.26 via email. So this allows you easily to add a new page and make that page personalized for your needs. We also have recipe guides, contact sheets, SWAT tools, business tools, you name it. There's a lot of tiles out there to help you make this device something that you're going to use every day. And most importantly, put everything in one place in its place. That way you can treat this as a second brain or just treat this as your singular notebook. No more scattered notes across your desk. That's what this is capable of doing. The last thing I'll show you is if I go back and I click on that drop down and I go to tags and I click on open to do, you're going to see that that page, if I click on it, was right here. So that is a great way for you to know where in your planner, where in your notes, you created to do's. And once I've completed those do, to do's, I can come back here. The little tag button is solid. I'm going to come in here, tap, and turn that off. Now, there's no solid tag there anymore. And guess what? If I go back to my to-dos, this will update, and it's no longer there as a to-do. So that is a quick look at how you can get started with the Remarkable Pro or Paper Pro lineup. These also tips also work on previous generations, Remarkable 1 and 2. But this is a quick look at all the tools and how you can take full advantage of them. We did a complete series on our thoughts behind this tool kit, as well as the planning system, as well as the workflow between these devices. So go ahead, check out those videos. I can promise you we're going to continue to have more videos on how to utilize this device. So if you already learned one thing, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. If you liked what you saw, please like and share with your friends. We can build a community around this. If you have any questions, hit the comments myself or somebody in that community, I'm sure, will answer you. I hope today was meaningful, and I thank you for your time. And Lord willing, I'll see you guys in the next video.